How, how many of you are blessed with this sermon? Yeah, amen. Are you expecting better things to happen to you? Because we are talking about better things that accompany salvation or better things that follow salvation. This is yours. This is, I don't just speak this because I want to hype you or you know, make you excited. But because this is what the Bible is saying, what God is saying, that should, you should have, you should experience because he said, it, he said this in his word. Better things. Hebrews 11, uh, Hebrews 6, 9, he said, we are persuaded, we are confident, we are, you know, uh, convicted, deeply convinced of better things concerning you, which follow salvation, things that follow salvation. And then Hebrews 11, verse 40 says, uh, God having provided better things for us, Right? That without us, this thing will not be complete. Means there is a purpose why you are here. There is a purpose why you are in Christ. Because God, we will read that again. Because I did not finish that last week. We will read that again today. I want to show you something there. Between the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints, which is you and I. What do we have? Because God provided these better things that... Um, Follow salvation, and these things, these better things, will not be complete without you. So you are very special. You are very special. Uh, I was listening to uh, David Parson. He talked about great men. Great men, because Moses uh, is one of the greatest prophet. Elijah is one of the greatest prophet. John the Baptist is one of the great uh, prophet. So he talked about the great men. He said. Great men, usually it happens either early in life or later in life. Uh, some people become great, you know, they become somebody early in life. When you talk about, you know, the, the, the prophets or uh, people that God used in the Bible, a lot of them are young people, right? They became great because God anointed them, used them and all. Uh, but not only that, but also in the world, they became great, some of the kings um, they become great kings in the young age. But some people became great when they are in their later years, not in the middle age, in the middle age. But it happens either early in life or later in life. So if, if you have not experienced great things or uh, doesn't make you to become somebody in your early days or younger days, then you need to expect it today if you are not in the middle age. <laughs> All right? But young people, you can expect this thing to happen because you are still young. And you need to position yourself. You need to pursue it. You need to desire it, expect it to happen in your life. Don't waste your time. Say amen. amen. Don't waste your time. Because God called people and used people even in their young age. It's good to be in God. It's good. There's a great blessing to be in the Lord. So we are talking about this. And next week, I promise to finish that. Uh, we stay here quite long. But I want this to really sing in our hearts that you will memorize these scriptures. Hebrews 11, uh, 9, uh, 6, 9, Hebrews 6, 9, and Hebrews eleven fourteen. 14. All right? And uh, it is so interesting because it is mentioned twice in the book of Hebrews. And uh, these better things, better things. This is the business of God. He makes your life to become better. Say amen. He, he, he doesn't only call you to believe him or to follow him. But when you believe in and follow him, he, uh, you know, makes sure that your life will become better. Amen. Better than your life in the world. Better than your life in the flesh. Better than your life, you know, running around without a goal, without purpose in your life. But when you found Jesus in your life. God provided better things. And he wants to make your life to become better. Amen. Maybe not rich or not so rich, not so loaded or, you know, or, or having many things. But for sure, your life is better. And we want that. And God wants that to happen in your life. To have a better life. Not to stay in where you are. 
All right, I mentioned this in the, uh, I think in the first uh, sermon, I preached that many people, they are more comfortable in their known bondages than the unknown freedom. There are freedom in Christ which many people do not know and do not understand. But people are so comfortable with the life that is full of bondages. Even though they know that those things are bad, they are bound, they are in prison. But they are comfortable in those things. And what happened, there is no change, there is no progress in their life. Hallelujah. No progress. They are still the same. But if you are in Christ, you live in freedom. God sets you free. Because you are free, you can progress. You always move on. Amen. When people look at you, when people see you or your friends meet you again, they said something new in you. When you open your mouth, they feel Something new, something fresh coming out of your mouth. You are not talking about the same thing. You will not be talking about those things, uh, disappointments and hurts and all that from 20 years ago, from 30 years ago. All right. You know, interesting when you sit down with old people. Try to sit down with old people, especially those who do not know God who don't have Christ in them, who don't live their life rejoicing in Christ. When you sit down with them, ah, mulala to. They open their mouth and they said, last time, those donkey years, somebody hurt me. Aya, my son. Aya, my daughter. All this, they talk, all these hurts and disappointments. Very seldom old people, when you sit down with them, they will tell you, I am old, I've experienced a lot of things, but now I am in Christ. Wow, I'm so old, huh? don't know how many years I will live. I'm 80 years old now. I'm waiting for Jesus to take me home so that I can rest and enjoy with Jesus. Very seldom old people, you can hear them talk like that. So I hope we will not be like that because we experience better things in Christ now. Hallelujah. There's nothing that we need to regret because we are in Christ. Yes, maybe we experience bad things in our life, but God heals them. God restores them. God makes us new. And we need to stay there. And we need to live in freedom. Don't be comfortable with the bondage that we have. I mentioned this. A lot of people, they, they love to drink liquor, get drunk and all of that. And they are comfortable with that. But they suffer. They suffer. They lose their money because they buy these things and get addicted with these things and all. But they are comfortable. They are happy with that. When you tell them, hey, stop drinking. They said, why you want me to stop? This is the only joy that I have. When you ask, why you ask me to stop smoking? This is the only enjoyment. That, don't you dare to ask me to stop smoking. See, they are very comfortable. But they don't realize the freedom they have. If they repent of that, they are free from that. They don't understand the freedom that they will have. That, that you don't have to be bound with the craving, with the addiction that you have to look for these things, you know. When you go out in the restaurants, you quietly go out, go to the corner because you need to smoke. <laughs> yeah. That's bondage. And you feel guilty all the time. I need to smoke there in the dark corner. I need to smoke outside. You need to run there because you feel guilty. You don't want people to see. You don't want your family to see. Sometimes I feel bad for my father because sometimes, you know, when, when he go with me last time in the car, he knows that I don't smoke. So he, he has to stop, so he get out from the car. Any chance, any opportunity, he go and, you know, and then come back. He feel guilty. 
You don't have to feel like that. You need to be free. And these are the better things that God has provided for us. Say amen. You don't have to put yourself under bondage. That you live in condemnation. You live in guilt. You need to live in freedom. Nothing to hide. Nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to be feared. Nothing to be ashamed of. Because I am free in Christ. Amen. And this is what God wants you to have. Now last week I mentioned the first one. Uh, to position ourselves to experience this better thing. Because it's not free. Even though God has provided. We need to position ourselves there. You, you need to move towards it. You need to walk in it. Live in it. All these things. Number one, when God asks you to do something, God knows that you can do it. All right? A lot of people, we, cannot, we feel we cannot do because we have the problem of self-talk. We talk to ourselves. You cannot do it. You are not worthy. You are not good enough. You know? You are on border. All this. Yeah? Yeah. So all these things, that self-talk. Don't talk to yourself like that. You need to look at God. Amen. This is what we see. And then the second one, we talk about you are governed, you are dominated by the way you think about yourself. So people are dominated and governed by the way they think about themselves. Our Proverbs says, as a man thinks, so is he. So don't think yourself in a negative way because it will control you, it will govern you. A lot of us, we have potential. I mentioned this. Actually, all of us, we have potential in us. We have potential in us to be great men and women of God. We have potential to be successful people. God created us like that. Amen? God created. You are a champion. Even though you have not gone into, into any competition, you are already a champion. Say yes. You are a champion. Because why? When, when the sperm, you know, uh, goes in, uh, they, they were fighting and they were competing. And guess what? You are the one who made it. With all those thousands of sperms, you are the one that made it. You are a champion. You are not an ordinary person. You have potential in you. And we have great potential. But because the way we think, our mind and all, so that dominate us and we cannot break through and we cannot take hold of this full potential that God has given to us. Amen. I cannot imagine that I can stand like this today, even stand in front of people going places and all of that. Because I remember before I know the Lord, I was very shy and I was uh, what do you call uh, introvert. You know, and I like to isolate myself. That is what I am. And I cannot even speak in front. But I had a breakthrough when they asked me to share testimony because I was so on fire. I love the Lord, even though I'm, I was shaking. I was nervous, but I take up. He said, next week you share testimony. So I prepare, I share testimony. And when I shared my testimony, I was sweating. So big my sweat. After I finished my testimony, it was only about 10, 15 minutes testimony. But when I finished my testimony, I was soaked in sweat. I remember all my shirt was wet of sweat. But I went through that. But after that experience, it was a breakthrough. Now I stand in front of people and I can just preach like that. So it's, it's this, the way we think. You need to break yourself free from this. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of love, power and, and a sound mind. And then last week I go into a sowing and reaping. What you sow, you will reap. A very important principle. This is in the word. What you sow, you will reap. So this is part of. Positioning ourselves in experiencing the better things that God has provided for us that accompany salvation. You need to start sow, sowing good things, sowing good life. You need to sow. It's not, it's not as easy as we think because you need to be careful with your life. 
we need to keep on sowing. You need to work at it, like sowing good character. You know, um, I, I feel, now I feel blessed because of my baby. Why? Because I, I see that God gives me opportunity, you know, to go through life again with children. So, with a baby. So now I'm, I try my best and to be careful in, you know, handling my baby. Because I want to impart, I want to sow something good in her life. All right? So I want to be a good mirror to her. All right? So I'm not saying my two children not like that, but maybe it's just different. Uh, but they, they turn out to be good children. Praise the Lord for that. All right? But, uh, I mean, I, maybe I did good, uh, but I want to do better. So always be better, be better. Right. So, so, so good things. The words that you speak, um, the way you live, uh, the, way, the way you carry yourself, right? Because it's a, it's a sowing. You are sowing it you know, in every aspect of our life. Every aspect of our life. So we sow. We saw. There are things also I want to do. Actually, I started doing uh, last one, two years. But uh, it's not easy, but I try to. Uh, got opportunity, I will do. All right? But that is very personal. And um, praise God, some of the things uh, it's done. I, I managed to do it. Praise God. Uh, but there are few few things that I need to I pray the Lord will help me to achieve that. Because we un I understand this principle, sowing and reaping. Galatians 6, 7 said, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So these make us to understand, we need to be careful with what we do with our life today. Because for sure, you will Rip it. You will rip it. So, and usually this happens when we grow older, right? So, we don't want these things to haunt us when we grow older. Whatever we can do, we do it right or we make it right today because you are sowing good life, good character. You need to Work on it. You have to work on it. All right? Now, I want to mention this in Hebrews 11. We read from verse 33 to 40. Hebrews 11. These are the people who, because of what they did and their trust in God, they put their life in God, even though they have, they have to face a lot of risks in their life, persecutions and all of that. But they trust the Lord. And because they trust the Lord, this is what happened. So from verse 33, Hebrews 11 lists all these servants of God uh, because of faith. Yeah? Through faith, through faith, through faith. And this is what happened to them. In verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms. They subdued kingdoms. Work righteousness. Obtain promises. Stop the mouths of lions. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Became valiant in battle. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. 35. Women received their dead. Raised to life again. Others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance. That they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings. Yes. And of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown in two, they were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. 39. All these, all these people, all these Old Testament saints, having Obtain a good testimony through faith. 
did not receive the promise. Verse 40, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. I read this many times, but only recently I saw this thing. Actually, when I was preaching last Sunday, the BM1, so I saw this, I, I got excited. And all the things that these people went through, because they put their faith in God, they live a life that is worthy of God. Maybe not worthy of the world. The world does not receive them, accept them, persecuted them, even killed them and all. But they put their life, they, are, they do good. That is how they sow in their life. They trusted God. They put their faith, they are so committed to God to live for God. Even though they face trials and testings and persecutions, many of them were killed. But in verse 39, that excites me because he said, All these people, all these people, having obtained good testimony. So of all the things that they do, they were faithful to God and they live for God. They keep on sowing good things, righteousness, faith, and all of that to God. What did they receive? They did not receive the promise, it says here, but they received a good testimony. <laughs> they receive a good testimony. And God is so proud of them that God said these things about them. But what excites me is, these Old Testament saints receive a good testimony. And we can shout amen to that. But I think you can shout louder amen because for us we will not only receive a good testimony but God said we will receive a better things <laughs> God is so good you are so meaningful your life you yourself you as an individual as individual you are special because the Old Testament saint receive only a good testimony. But you will receive better things. Because you believe in him. You put your faith in him. You are consistent in him. You are faithful to him. Even though whatever happened in your life, how hard, how difficult life may be, but you hold on to God. You hold on to the Lord. So church, let us live our life so that we can receive these better things because we are different from the Old Testament saints. Another one I want to go in today. Oh, we have plenty of time. I didn't know, yeah? I preach very slow. The other one, and then the, the last point, I will share it next week because something special there uh, in the last point. Fine. So, change is inevitable, but growth is optional. So if you want to experience these better things, these better things will happen to you. You don't only need to change because change cannot be avoided. And growth is optional. means you need to make a choice to progress, to experience all this that God has provided. You need to make a choice. Right? Change is unavoidable. If you don't change, one day you have to change. Why? Because not because you want to, but you have to. When you when you tell people who love to drink to get drunk, change, 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 change until how many years they don't change. But then suddenly, one day you came to them and you found them change. Then you ask them, 
Why? You stopped drinking already. You change. Then they tell you, yeah, Lord, I change because got ulcer already. So I have to change. Lah. Can I drink already, right? Some people, they change because they have to. Not because they want to. Or they were asked to. So we don't have to wait until somebody asks us to change. Or we want to change. Don't wait until we have to change. Because of situation. Or because of health issues. No, we have to change. Some people, they're so stubborn, they don't change until it kills them. Right? It kills them. They don't change. Until they have very bad health issues, they also don't change. We send one old man, about maybe almost 80 years old, because we help them, because they cannot manage themselves. The children don't take, take care of them. So we went and cleaned their house, you know. We help, help what we can do. So we, I bring, brought the church to their place and we clean um, everything. So this old man liked to smoke. So he ended up in hospital. Then the nurse told him, he said, Uncle, please, Uncle, don't smoke. He said, I don't smoke, really. I don't smoke. He said, when did you, uh, when you stop, how long? Have you not smoked? He said, two weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, you don't smoke two weeks ago. What's the point? All right? But he has very bad uh, health issues. His lungs affected and all. So don't wait. Because change, if you don't do it now, one day it will come to you. And you have to change. Hold on. I feel cold, huh? But growth is optional. Now, let me read Mark chapter 2, verse 22. Jesus said, no one puts new wine into old wine skin, or else the new wine bursts the skins, and the wine is spilled, and the wine skin are ruined. But new wine must be put into, into new wine skin. Some people are just stubborn, and they want to keep the old. So what happened when you put the new in the old, it has a bad effect, like the wine. Because new wine, it will ferment and the gas is very strong, so sometimes it bursts the skin. All right? But new wine must put it, to, means when you experience new things or change, you have to be new. You cannot live in the old. You cannot operate in the old ways. You cannot keep your old character, old nature, old attitude. You need to live in the new. And you need to make a choice. Choose to live in the new. Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. He said, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him. And establish in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So he says, now we receive the Lord Jesus. We believe in the Lord Jesus. He said, walk in him. It's a choice. Actually, he commands us to walk. Not only to believe in Jesus. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I know, but you are not walking in him. You need to walk. You need to make a choice. Now turn. You need to turn around. You need to turn the way you walk. You need now to walk in Him. You need to follow Him. You need to learn how to walk in Him, with Him. It's a choice. And that is growth. Rooted, built up, established in Him, in the faith. So how to be rooted, built up, and established? You need to grow. How to grow? You need to learn. You need to be in church. You need to be in fellowship. You need to be in prayer meeting. You need to read your Bible. You need to pray. Not only that, but you need to live in it. That's how you grow. We cannot stay just, you know, wait and wait. No, you have to walk in it. That is change. That is growth. It's optional. It means you need to choose. I choose to grow. 
every year. Amen. I need to choose. I choose to walk with Jesus every day. I choose to, you know, look at the word every day and read the word every day. I don't wait until I feel good. I don't wait until I have time. I make time. Whether I feel good or not good, I have to open my Bible because I need to read it. And I mark where I read. I, I need to know where I stop so that I can pick it up again the next day. Read. Put a marker there. You need to do like that. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's not like something just happened to me. One day I wake up in the morning. I say, oh, I love the word. I love the word. It's not like that. It's you build it up. You establish the habit. You grow in the habit of reading the word. Hallelujah. All right? I was with the pastors in the Orang Asli the other day in Cameron Highland. So we have discussion. They said, Pastor, why? I just want to ask. He said, why? Why? When we read the Bible, wow, so sleepy. Because we're talking about you need to read, you're leaders, you're pastor, you need to read the Bible more. But so they asked a question. I said, why, pastor? Just want to ask this question. Why, when we read the Bible, very sleepy. And it's sometimes if we cannot sleep, we read the Bible so that we can sleep. But if we read the handphone or play handphone, we don't sleep. We don't even think of sleeping. Not sleepy at all. I say, why? So I just encourage them. I said, no, the, the problem is discipline. Because why? Talk about attention. It's different. Handphone catches your attention. Very interesting. But Bible is different. All right? there, are, there are many factors, but one of it is you need to discipline, you need to focus, you need to put your attention there. So whether you like it, you don't like it, you feel good, not good, you have time, no time, you need to make yourself to read it. Discipline. Okay, Bible, this time, this time, I will read my Bible. I don't wait. I don't wait, you know, do everything every day. Why the feeling that don't come yet? Why I have no feeling to read the Bible? So just do my word. Wait for the feeling to come. You don't wait for the feeling to come. Oh, some people, I read my Bible because now I'm very sick. Headache, gut fever. I need God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I read my Bible. If they don't have problem, they don't read the Bible. It's a matter of discipline. You build a habit like that. Say Amen. And this is the word of life. When you read this, you have life. If you read handphone, you have no life. Some people are so engrossed with the phone, play game and all of that. There's no life. You don't get anything from here. Say amen. Now I'm not saying to you, you throw away your handphone. Because if you throw, I will catch it. We need this. I need this. This is not bad. But sometimes we don't know how to manage. This is the word of life. It can give you life. It speaks to you. You will know God from here. But many people, they don't want to spend time here. Change is inevitable, but growth is a choice. It's optional. I want to share a little bit about keys in making a life change. I hope this will help you. Number one, change requires humility. A proud man justifies and rationalizes his behavior. Only a humble man will seek change. So change requires humility. You need to be humble with yourself, even with yourself, for change to happen. Uh, don't think that, oh, I am okay. You know, that is something that really hinders us. We are not okay. Uh, some, they think they are very spiritual. I'm okay. I'm okay with God. I'm okay, you know. I don't go to church, never mind. I'm okay with God. I pray in the house, what? I read my Bible, what? 
So church not important. I go if I go. Uh, some people like this. Oh, I I don't give my tithe. It's okay. I pray. God understand. God understand. I need to pay my bills. God understand. I don't have enough. God understand. Yeah, but I think also God understand that you don't give your tithes. So God understand you don't give your tithes. God close the heavens for you. God understand that. Some people they neglect giving and they argue. Now they become more Bible scholars. They become theologians now about tithing, and they discourage people from giving tithes. So because they feel they are spiritually good, so they don't do certain things. They don't do certain. That is what they call the sin of omission. You omit, omit, omit. I'm okay with God, so I don't do this. I don't do this. I, this one no need. This one no need. God understand, I'm okay. So I don't put myself there to be very committed in all of that. We don't think like that, right? I, I mentioned to you before, I mentioned to you before that even though I'm serving the Lord, I still have a fear in my heart and a question in my heart. If I stand before God, will God say to me, well done, good and faithful servant? Not that, it's not that I don't believe in his salvation, I don't believe in Christ, but I have that fear in me. We should be living our life in the fear of God every day. Because if you live in the fear of God, then you will live right with God. You will not do something wrong. You will live straight, you will live holy, you will live righteous. If you live in the fear of God, some people, they live as if that, you know, they go to heaven like so holier until they overshoot. A lot of Christians like that. Those who are serving the Lord, they feel like that. They are very qualified. So they live their life like very loose. You need to live soberly. Live carefully. Even though we know God, we have salvation, we serve God, but we live carefully. Say amen. amen. Until God calls us home. It's very important. Number two, change requires new thinking. You have to renew your mind so that change will happen. You cannot always think in the old-fashioned way. You need to renew your mind. Number three, change requires support. Determination, encouragement to offset distractions, obstacles, and temptation. This is part of the things that I will share next week. That you, you, you cannot walk alone. You need support. You need people with you, especially Godly people, not church people, not Christian. To be with Christian, not enough. You need to be a godly Christian. You need to be around trusted Christian, reliable Christian. <laughs> is, it, is it true or not? You agree with me? All right. Many people, they suffer in life. Why? Because they just believe any Christian or any ministers or any servants of God. Because they are servants of God, I trust them. You know, I got disappointed with many servants of God. And I learned it in the hard way. Not all servants of God are godly. Not, servants of God, not all servants of God are Trustworthy, reliable, honest, not all. So you need to really ask God to bring this godly, trusted, reliable, honest Christians or ministers of God into your life. Don't believe everything. The devil can disguise himself to be a prophet come to you. 
The devil can disguise himself to, become, uh, to be, you know, apostles or pastors to come to your life. My friend told me, somebody that we know, he called himself man of God. Not very far from here. Somewhere in Mars. He said, this guy will go to churches. And he joined the churches, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And after that, he will look at the members. And he will tell them. He will follow them. And to see where they stay, where they live, where their house is. And after a few days, or whenever he wants to come, he will come into that house. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord, sister. The Lord led me to your house. You remember me in the church? I met you. But the Lord led me. The Holy Spirit led me into your house. So come to the house. Talk to them. Impress them. I am a man of God. This is what I do. You know. But he's a con man. He swindled them. And many become his victim. Until he become a police case. So we need to grow. I'm not discouraging you. I'm not saying that you don't respect your pastor and all. But you need to discern. Of course, if you are in your church, of course, you respect your leaders and pastors. But what I mean sometimes outside all these men of God, you know. Can you believe, can you believe a prophet, so-called prophet, somewhere on the other side of the world, just through the video and Zoom, can control a person here in Malaysia. And the person, he said, this is my mentor, this is my father, this is my prophet. I receive prophecy every day. He pray for me every day. And every month I give money to him to support his ministry. Can you believe that? That's not healthy. That is not healthy. And sometimes we ask people, which church you go to? Which church you go to? I don't go to church. Oh, where's your church? My church is online. Who's your pastor? My pastor is not here. My pastor is somewhere on the other side of the world. We meet in the video. That's nonsense. Huh? That's nonsense. Change. So you need support. You need godly people. You need somebody that can talk to you, can mentor you, can guide you, can walk with you. You can call them anytime and talk to them. Share your problem and all of that. But make sure it's a trusted one. Number four, change requires um, dissatisfaction with the status quo of the familiar. So you, you must not be satisfied with where you are now. If you are satisfied with where you are now, then you will not change. You won't change. You won't move. So you need to be dissatisfied with what you have now. Number five, change requires us to visualize a preferred future that we wish to attain. Because if uh, without vision, the people perish. You need to visualize who you will be, who you want to become in the future. Maybe five years from now, ten years from now. Who you are. You need to visualize yourself. That really helps. And number six, change requires decisive action. With high yet realistic expectation. You need to put high expectation about yourself, but of course the realistic one. Don't put expectations so high that you cannot even achieve it. But be realistic. Be realistic. So you need to have this decisive action. As I said that we all have potential. We have great potential in us. God put that seed in our life. His power, his glory, the Holy Spirit. Gideon said, oh, we are the least. I'm the least from my family. We are the least from the tribe of Israel. But God said, you 
a mighty man of valor. Gideon saw himself as the least, very small, neglected, despised. But God said, no, you are a man of valor. When Peter encountered Jesus, because the miracle of the fish that they caught, Peter pushed aside Jesus, pushed him away. He said, Lord, go away from me, for I am a sinner. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, Lord. But Jesus said, from now on, you become fishers of men. It's a potential. You have potential. We have potential. Amen? All right? So do you, do you love church like this? We can talk to you like this? Not to make you happy with the sermon and create joke all the time? To hide people all the time? But we, we, we talk real thing. We preach the word. It's the truth. So sometimes I preach like this. All right? So sometimes it comes strong and all of that. But that is what God wants you to hear. All right? And uh, praise God. That's the word. That's the word. Change is hard. But if we don't change that, it will get harder when we grow older. So better change now than when we grow old, we have a lot of heartache and headache and belly ache, back ache, tooth ache, all the ache ache. <laughs> so better change now. Don't wait for the egg to come. So change now. I know it's hard. It's a bit hard. But it's better to change. I will reserve the last uh, for next week. Um, we will talk about in these better things that we will experience that God provided for us. You were not designed to navigate life alone. So there are a few things I want to mention this next week. That I, I really believe it will help us all. 2024, time to change, time to progress, time to grow. 2024, a lot of better things that we will experience if we walk with God, position ourselves. If you believe it and expect it, say amen. All right? Amen. I want to close with this. You remember Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, John chapter 3. And Jesus said, uh, he said, oh, Rabbi, you do miracles and all of this. You are from God and all. But Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless a man be born of the spirit and water, he said, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And you remember what Nicodemus said. He said, Lord, I am an old person. How can I be born again? Can an old man go back to the mother's womb and all of that? I learned something new. When Nicodemus said like that, of course, when we read that, we, we think that Nicodemus was saying, I am old, yeah? I'm an old man, I am a grown-up man, I cannot go back to my mother's womb. But actually, Nicodemus was saying, he said, Lord, I am an old man. It's too late for me to change. Too late for me to be born again. I'm, I'm, I'm too old. I'm, I'm an expert in the Torah. I'm a theologian. I teach my people. And it's too late for me that you tell me to be born again means to change and to transform. It's too late. But Jesus said it's not too late. It's not too late. Jesus said you must, John 3 verse 7, he said you must be born again. No matter how old you are, no matter how experienced you are, no matter how knowledgeable you are, no matter how much you know, you think that you know everything, Jesus said, you must be born again. Means you must change. You must progress. You can change. You must be born again. That's a new meaning. Eh? So you are not too old to change. We are not too old to change. As long as we are living in this world, we can experience everything that God has provided for us. And God can use us for his glory. Say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
You don't know maybe this year you will experience great things. You don't know maybe this year you will have breakthrough. You don't know this year God will just come and touch your life and things will happen in your life. You must believe it. Amen. There is hope in God. If you trust him, there is hope in God. Praise God. I want us to stand. We want to sing that song again. Chikaina can help me. Musician, come. We sing this song as we close. We have plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time. And as we sing this song, as we close in prayer, I want you to reach out to God. Tell God, yes, Lord, I thank you for the better things that accompany salvation. I thank you for the better things that you have provided for me. It's mine. It's for me. And I want it. I want to experience it. I want these things to happen and to come into my life. Can we do that? You have to do it. I cannot do it for you. I just lead you in prayer. I just lead you. You have to do it. Say, Lord, touch me. I want this. I want healing. I want restoration. I want change. I want to be transformed. I want miracle to happen in my life. I want you to reach out to God. I want you to cry out to God. Cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's let's sing this song. I need some backup here. Is my backup here. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you know, one of the one of the things that we need to do in praise and worship, you have to participate. You have to open your mouth. You have to uh, you know, lift up your voice and open your heart. All right? Uh, you don't... Many people in the church, they let the singers to sing for them. We are not singing for you. I sing, I sing to Jesus and the song become my words. The song become my prayer. So you sing, you sing to Jesus let these words become your prayer. And you talk to Jesus personally. You pray and sing to Jesus personally. Amen? You don't need to have a good voice. You don't have to be a professional singer. God loves your voice. Yeah, Good voice, high pitch, low pitch, flat or whatever. He loves all the sounds. Alright, let's sing this song as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Started. When I hear the word, you just walk through. Very meaningful words. You are the maker. There is God the moon. Come on, say it to him. When I'm out of faith, you're still faithful. When I'm at my worst, are still good. All of my questions, you are the answer. It all points to you. Come on, lift your voice, everybody. You're the God of the break. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working away. When there's no way out, this one thing I know. You're still on your throne, so whatever I feel, I still got a reason to pray. You're still on your throne, so whatever I'm feeling, I still got the reason to praise, praise, praise. I still got the reason to praise, praise.
to paradise Stones just not rolling away When you come around my heart starts to beat again Love's red to bring you in Souls just erupt into grace When you come around tribal Come to yeah. desert to paradise Stones just start rolling around dry, bon dry bones will come to life desert will turn into paradise and stones that are that close any opportunity will roll away when God comes around our hearts will start to beat again our lungs will stretch and breathe him in we give praise to Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness. We trust in you, Lord. We pray with all of our hearts. And we believe and expect great things to happen to us. All these better things that you have promised us and provided for us, Lord. Thank you. And I want to declare and speak this word to every one of us including those who are watching us through Facebook Live. I pray that all these things will happen to us in this year, Lord. That we will see our life will be better because of these better things. 
We thank you. We praise you. Before we close, I want to pray that you will move in our midst by your spirit and your power. You minister to us and touch us in every area of our life. Touch and bring healing and restoration, Lord. Holy Spirit, move and move in our hearts of your people. Thank you, Lord. Rain down your Holy Spirit. Rain down your Holy Spirit and pour out your blessing upon your people today. Healing, restoration. Let the power of God touch your people, I pray. Thank you for this, Lord. We love you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering and you may be seated for a while for the announcement. Uh, the, the offering and announcement. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. You enjoyed that today? I believe you enjoyed it, yeah? Wow. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. All the time, yeah? Yeah. I feel like I'm very full now with the word. Amen? It's something that you, you bring it home. Praise God. We want to collect the offering. Just want to encourage you. Our, be our church believe in tithing, offering, uh, especially for the church members. You know, you know the uh, as a church member, we give our tithes to the church, not only offering, all right? So let's support the church. Um, we have a wonderful church here. We have a good word. We have good worship, good fellowship in this church. And I believe that every Sunday you carry something home because of the word of God and the fellowship in this church. All right? So I want to encourage you to give to the Lord. Continue to support us in this ministry. All right? Um, so that we can do even more uh, for this church and for the kingdom of God. All right? So let's pray for the offering. Yeah, Shekinah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this morning. Lord, we just thank you for your word, Lord God, that it has touched us, changed us, Father. Hallelujah. Renew us and refresh us, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, this morning that we have the opportunity, Father, to come before you, you to give you back, Father God, the blessing that you have poured in our life, Father. Lord, hallelujah, this morning as your children give, as your people give before you, Father, that you will bless, Lord God, their hearts, Lord Jesus. They are giving, Father God, that you will double fold it, triple fold it, hundred fold it, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, that their life will be blessed, Lord Father, will be changed. Their careers, their work, Father God, Amen. hallelujah. Yes. Their families, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. Father, their walk in you, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the hands that gives this morning, Jesus. Bless us, Lord. Bless your people, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give to the Lord. God bless you. Those who join us online, you can give through online. The church account number is on the screen. You can screenshot it and keep it for yourself. All right? you can give any time. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the offering. I believe the Lord will bless your life and as you walk with Him. Alright? So go with the word of the Lord. Um, fellowship with us uh, over lunch before you go and take your time. Thank you for being here. We'll see you again Friday and Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen.